So one of Gemini's most powerful and useful features, Gems, is going free for all users. Yes, completely free, but that's not all, as the free tier is getting smarter, which is somewhat of a big deal, but let's get into it and see how you benefit from some of these brand new Gemini changes. If you do want more Gemini, Google and Android information, news and all of the tidbits, then how about you hit that subscribe button? It really helps me out more than you know, and you join in a growing community of like-minded people. Cheers, and let's get back to it. So here's the deal. Google is rolling out a handful, well, more than a handful actually, of Gemini app updates for end users centered around an upgraded version of 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental. Terrible name, which remains in preview still currently. In basic terms, this is a better reasoning model for the AI that offers better explanations for its actions, plus, most importantly, improved performance. Back to what is going to benefit you though. For starters, more of the Gemini advanced features that are under paid tiers are coming out there for free users. This follows Google bringing document upload and generating images of people to everyone on the free tier last month. So gems, this is the one that I think will be most notable to anybody out there. If you didn't know what they were, they're custom versions of Gemini tailored to specific tasks with specific sets of instructions that you can provide if you want. Free users over the age of 18 can now use a few pre-made gems like the brainstormer option, career guide, a coding partner which should help you build sites and applications, and a learning coach for basically anything, and a writing editor or, and I think this is where the power comes in, you can create your own, like I've done with a translator, a meal planner, or even a maths coach. What's more, you can access them all on mobile once you've created them, but the ability to create those new ones is only available on the web. So what I would say is go there first, play around and create what you think you'll need. And the gems manager will let you write instructions, upload files to reference or that Gemini should reference and assign it a name that basically suits the task that you want it to do. It's actually easier than it sounds initially. So in theory, the possibilities with gems are practically endless. In reality, there are gonna be some limits as there are with most AI services out there. I must admit, I haven't played around with a ton of gems, even with an advanced subscription that I've had for a while now, but what I have done is test out some of the gems for things like language learning. And I will say that the writing editor is really useful for adding a little bit of extra polish to your prose, anything that you've written. So assignments, that kind of thing will be really useful. So I think if you're a student, it's definitely well worth testing. Here's why I think gems are gonna be really powerful though now that they're free. With custom gems, I think you might not need certain app subscriptions or need multiple applications that you can basically plug your requests into individually. You can turn that into a gem, then the further information that you provide to Gemini and ask questions about will therefore make it more powerful to you and more tailored to you rather than a one-stop shop, all size, all fits, all fits, all size approach. You know what I mean. It basically just gives you the ability to get in-depth information and then contextual outputs after the fact it's like apps within apps within apps, if that makes any sense. At least it does in my head, at the very least. Gems could also be one of those killer functions alongside the upcoming Astra video integration that makes Gemini just more useful to more normal people, at least in my opinion. The updates don't stop there though, as Google is also bringing deep research to all Gemini free users after launching on the advanced tier back in December. It's available in over 45 languages, which is really great to see. Hopefully we'll get more languages as well later down the line. One of the most notable changes here is that the research tool is now powered by a new version of Gemini 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental. This model update from 1.5 Pro results in improvements across planning, searching, reasoning, analyzing, and reporting at least according to Google, well, what they're saying. The thinking aspect of this upgrade means Gemini shows its thoughts while it browses the web. Besides opening a model picker, a new chip in the prompt bar will let you deep research. And I think it's really nice to see. Zooming out a little though, Google is also updating 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental, it's a horrible name again, to offer better efficiency and speed. The reasoning model is, quote, trained to break down prompts into a series of steps to strengthen its reasoning capabilities and deliver you better responses. In practice, it's quite a bit faster than the previous model. I can't speak for everyone as your use case is gonna be unique to you, but it definitely feels like it's giving better results and responses in the time I've been testing it on mobile and desktop. It's also really nice to see the reasoning behind outputs. It helps make AI feel a lot less obscure and a little less conceptual, at least to those that wanna use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Another bonus is that you can now also upload files when using this model, with Gemini Advanced users getting a 1 million token context window. This equates to potentially hundreds of pages of text 
just to put it into some sort of viable concept. Basically, the bigger the context window, though, the more Gemini can take from your prompts and therefore give you better options when it actually processes that information. Additionally, 2.0 flash thinking experimental models can now access Gemini applications, which were previously called extensions like Gmail, Google Calendar, Drive, Messages, YouTube, and all that kind of jazz. This allows for prompts like, for instance, look for an easy curry recipe on YouTube, add the ingredients to my shopping list, and find me super supermarkets near me that are still currently open. I think that's super useful in the real world and something that puts real world conceptual options in Gemini itself. A Google Photos app plugin will also be available in the coming weeks to deliver the Ask Photos functionality. And with this, you can ask Gemini to look at photos from your recent trip and maybe create a travel itinerary based upon the places that you happen to visit. Or you can even ask Gemini to recall information like, when does your driver's license expire when you've taken a picture, a picture of it and it's in your Google Photos library? I think that's one of those, another one of those options that I think uses, gives you usability in the real world and goes beyond the Pixel Screenshots option, which is already available on Pixel 9 series devices. Google is also using 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental to power a new personalization model that is available to you. It basically connects to your Google apps and services beginning with search to supposedly deliver better responses that are better tailored to your individual needs. That remains to be seen at this stage. For example, though, with this, you'll be able to ask Gemini for restaurant recommendations, and it will re reference your recent food related searches, or even ask for, you might even want to ask for travel advice, and Gemini will be able to respond based upon the destinations you happen to have searched previously, which I think is really neat in all honesty. So this will expand to Google Photos, YouTube, and other apps in the coming months to quote, provide more personalized insights, drawing from a broader understanding of your activities and preferences to deliver responses that are truly gonna resonate with you. And after selecting this model, Gemini will just analyze your prompt and determine if your search history can enhance your response. It won't do it every single time. This can be useful for brainstorming and personalized recommendations. And I'm excited to see what will happen. So another example you could use this for is, for instance, where should I go on vacation this summer or on holiday this summer? Or for instance, I wanna start a YouTube channel in the sports niche, give me some content ideas, or maybe even I'm getting back into tabletop card games. Where can I go and learn to play Magic the Gathering or even the Pokemon TCG? I think this goes way beyond what Gemini 1.5 was capable of doing, especially now it's a more, as I say, I've said this a few times in this video, it has more real world applications. There's also more nuance in the kind of responses you'll get when using the AI service. And that's really good to see as AI still for a lot of people seems really, really abstract. Another thing I will say is that the best part of all of this is it's absolutely free. Although you could make the argument, the very strong argument that your personal data here is the fee, but I think that's another discussion for another day. Everything should be available pretty much immediately unless specified or failing that very soon. So I would say just go ahead and try it out for yourself and let me know what you think down in the comment sections below. I think it's a really interesting time for Gemini. It's one of those areas that Google is obviously blanketing the market and throwing Gemini where they can, but updates are important. They make a big difference to how we use our day-to-day -day technology from smartphones to PCs, everything in between. Cheers for watching though, and I will speak to you later.